Welcome to the Battle Zone. This is AWL Strong and Free. The whole podcast is going to go on for the first and first beginning of the parade and accompanied by a new day, Peggy, Goya, and part of the Dark Wave, the ladies of and Lupe Peligro, who will be acting as quarter woman in this match, is our number one contender to the AWL Joshi Championship, a title that will be defended tonight. In the main event, the undefeated Akira Medone versus Lupe Peligro, the knockout queen, but right now, it's a brand new tag team of terror. And Making their victory from the wasteland. Now, this is Taylor, Punky, Howitzer, the wasteland, the cool party. Wasteland War Party, the former tag team champions of Tokyo Joshi Pro, are making their debut as a tag team. We've seen Maxley and Taylor here in the APL several times but this is their first time bringing their tag team partner. And it does seem like Maxi Impaler is the lead of this team. We have never seen Heidi Howitzer in the Animated Wrestling League. She does not have a win-loss record to examine most about. Except... And they also, while they are now a registered tag team here in the AWL, they are 0-0 zero and zero in tag team competition. And it will be Maxi Impaler starting things off for their team, and boom! Bang the gong, we are on 15 minute time limit in this non-title tag team affair. And immediately, Max the Impaler using to using their weight and power advantage against the Jewel of Lucha Libre, Gioia. As I said tonight, main event, we've got the AWL Joshi Championship on the line, the undefeated AWL Joshi Champion, the true Toronto star Amy Wade, defends her undefeated streak and her Joshi Championship against Lupe Peligro, who you see in the background of your shot there. Uh, we also have action singles matches between the tag team number one contenders and the tag team champions of Joshi Division. And that's going to be Dragonus and Spring Tiger versus the female Augments in a pair of back-to-back -back singles bouts. And more tag and more action on top of that as we've got Wild Thing, who has been challenged to a best of seven series by Usachan, goes one-on-one -on -one with the Babe of the Power, Willow Nightingale. Very, very happy and grateful to Tony Ali for allowing her to come up here and visit us, get some reps in, in some of the best women's wrestling in the world. And the good news, ladies and gentlemen, there's no Bullet Club Gold this week, because it's Bullet Club. You think they're going to have any women willing to work for them? <laughs> I didn't think so. Yeah, we're doing an unofficial ladies' night tonight here in the AWL. Brand new women's tag team, and tag Kogeki opportunity. What are we going to see here? Uh, something probably very not good. Oh, nasty behind the back strike to the knee as Heidi Howitzer comes in, immediately goes for the choke, immediately goes for the Google, slaps Joya around. It's our first time getting a look at Heidi Howitzer, going for a simple full Nelson. Showing at least some training in the basic of the German suplex, whipping Tormenta del Fuego up, down, and around the AWL ring. They're walking right into a low DDT by the Judo Vichy Libre Joya. Joya comes into this match with a record of 22 and 27 in her AWL career, a ratio of minus 5. And of course, this is Heidi Howitzer's first match in the Animated Wrestling League. Going up and down and around and hard shot to the back. And Joya looking to cut the ring, looking to uh, get back on her side of the territory, but she stopped at the midpoint of that 20 by 20 foot ring by Heidi Howitzer. Looking for some kind of a power slam or no out. Ooh! Snake Eyes without much of a height advantage to get that, to get her opponent up to the turnbuckle, so that's done with pure strength. Referee making the disqualification five count. Oh, what is it? Oh, inverted body slam. 
Oh, wait, what is this? Oh, what the, what the hell is she doing? Well, Heidi Howitzer, we've just learned, is kind of an idiot. Maybe she sees opponents that aren't really there. Who knows? Tag made to the firestorm of Lucha Libre, Tormenta del Fuego, who really needs a win here. Really needs wins in her tag team matches now because Tormenta del Fuego, 11 and 30 in her AWL career. That means a ratio of minus 19. That makes her one of the lowest in the animated wrestling league. Ooh, kick away by Howitzer. I don't know if she was going for some kind of a pounce there, but could not connect with it. Tormenta de Fuego successfully backstepping with 11 minutes on the clock. Tormenta de Fuego going up to the white rope. She wants Heidi Howitzer on her feet for whatever she's got planned. And up, boom, Speed Star fell drop kick. Into the cover, one, kick out. As I was saying, Tormenta de Fuego really needs the win because if she doesn't get her win-loss ratio up and quick, She's going to be right back in Boxamania. Our season finale match where somebody from the men's and women's divisions will lose their AWL career. The four worst win-loss records of both divisions compete in an elimination match, a unique elimination match, where the winner of the match lead, where the, sorry, the winner of the fall leaves the ring and the loser of the final fall is fired. And that's what cost Betty Bubbles her career at the end of last season. And that's what started this whole rigmarole with Wild Thing and Betty's girlfriend, Usachan. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. Five minutes have elapsed. Ten remaining. Third of the way through the time limit here in our Canadian branch of the Animated Wrestling League. Ooh! And headbutt to a twisted wrist. And that's going to be painful, but that headbutt, that's going to force the joint further in the wrong direction. That's going to be extremely painful for Tormenta del Fuego. And you'd be remiss if you underestimate the grip of, uh, necessary to be a professional wrestler, the grip strength necessary. So a damaged wrist, a damaged hand, that can do a lot of, do a lot of problems. And wait a minute, going for the bulldog here, and boom, hits it. Max the Impaler trying to roll out of the ring does not get out of there and Maya ah! Kamehameha the fireball punch the Hadouken and wait a minute a rope break and a breakup and Tormenta del Fuego just now realizing what the heck just happened the referee I think may have actually missed that nasty looking kick you see that bullseye logo on the right knee pad of Max the Impaler. They like to basically knock their opponents out with that running knee. That psycho knee, as some people call it. And right now, maintaining the high ground. Your legal combatants with Mitchell Fuego and Max the Impaler. Swing and a miss. Irish whip off of the ropes. Oh, backflip. Tries to the drop kick. Does not take a larger wrestler off their feet. Oh, wait a minute. Back handspring in the head scissor takedown. Fernando Del Fuego showing exactly what you can do inside that ring. That is the power of Lucha Libre, and that is the skill of the ladies of Lucha. Arch shot by Max the Impaler. Max the Impaler, they are currently 4-3 and three in their AWL career. <laughs> Definitely a part-timer here in the AWL, but this new tag team, that could change very, very quickly. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute! Endless Light! Clothesline caught and countered into the Endless Light 1. And there's a very good chance that would have been a pinball if not for the salvation of Heidi Howitzer. Of the New England Howitzers, don't you know? When a big power slam opportunity. Oh, ooh! Ow! And that is a knockout. The referee forced to call that. Yeah, Tormented Ofrego has been... It, she, she's gone. She's out of this. We take a look at the dirty tactics of the Wasteland War Party. But take a look at this. Just boom! Incredible intensity. Here's the winner. The Wasteland. Oh, party.
And it looks like Heidi Howitzer, the designated driver of the duo. Meanwhile, Max the Impaler enjoying their victory. And frankly, I don't blame them. They've definitely earned this. That was a hell of a tag team match to start us off on AWL Strong and Free, episode 52. 52 weeks. So we've been doing this over a year now with the offseason. This is not a tag team affair. This is one-on-one, -on -one, but Wild Thing has got to have other things on her mind. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Introducing first, making her victory from Transylvania, representing Monster Union, accompanied by Manipulator. Well, down, wall, well, lay down talent, the test of step series, her career. Versus bringing back many bubbles to the animated wrestling league. Oh wait, what? Well, I wouldn't call I wouldn't call Lusa Chan a, a monster, but a bit of a change of turns here. Got to think that's the manipulators doing. And her opponent, being accompanied by Inox Corio. Okay, yeah, everybody's dancing. <laughs> Willow Nightingale here in the AWL Battle Zone getting some reps in outside of her duties in All Elite Wrestling. And we thank Tony Elite for allowing us to use some of his talent on an occasional basis. And Willow has become a massive megastar all around the world. The United States, here in Canada, over in Japan as well. And it's good to see one of the Jakara folks making good. That's what I love most about AEW, frankly. And right now, that tournament champion facing off against one of the few women in the world that can match her power for power. Wild Thing is currently 24 and 36 in her AWL career for a ratio of minus 12. Willow Nightingale perfectly balances all things should be. 11 wins, 11 losses in her animated wrestling league career. And of course she's got her tag team partner, the ephemeral queen Edith Surreal, in her corner. And going to town on the rear paw of Wild Thing in this opening minute in the opening 30 seconds i should say of this contest color nobo tie up irish whip off of the ropes big back body drop by the transylvanian terror wild thing the hardcore furry the lethal lycanthrope she's got all sorts of nicknames and she's going to be looking for that lycanthrope bomb to finish this off meanwhile willow of course has the babe with the power bomb the pounce and spicoli driver and many other ways she can put you down belly to belly slam by the powerhouse, the female powerhouse of Monster Union, Viva Monster Union. And... Okay, I've just been told that the AWL Commissioner's Office has accepted the terms of the Best of Seven series. The Commissioner, I'm just being told, sorry, this is coming in my ear in a moment. The AWL Commissioner does not want to lose Usachan as a talent, so the stipulation that Usachan will be forced to join Monster Union if she loses the Best of Seven series. Will it be in effect, and of course, if Usachan wins, then she will get her girlfriend back in her AWO career. I mean, seriously, being split up like this with a wrestler on the road, a partner at home, that's hell on any kind of relationship. Bear hug here, or wolf hug, I should say, by Wild thing. Ooh, elbow strike, elbow drop, and maybe trying to convert into something. We just try to escape. Bell clap, just for the escape. And there's that pounce! Not putting a period on it quite yet. Didn't get the full run up. Ooh, Uranagi side slam by Willow Nightingale, one of the best powerhouses in the Joshi division today. And I'm being told that Usachan has been granted a temporary trade 
to AWL Strong and Free to compete in that best of seven series that will begin next week. As Willow falls in the skies above, grabs the back ball. But the superhuman strength of the lethal leg of Hope allowing her to kick out very early in that exchange. Seven minutes and change on the clock here. Plenty of time for these two brutes to battle it out. Collar and elbow going up. Transylvanian drop from the Transylvanian werewolf. One kick out. Ooh, vicious, nasty kick to the head by Willow Nightingale, who's going up maybe with a Spicoli driver. I think, yeah, drops her. Into the cover. One, two, kick out by the lethal lycanthrope. It is surreal, shouting encouragement to Willow Nightingale. Getting the, getting the crowd up. Oh, and the claws of the werewolf to the back. That ring gear will provide some protection, but not a whole heck of a lot. A little bit of dirty fighting from, from Wild Thing. She doesn't need it, but she doesn't, I don't think she fully understands the concept of a fair fight. Going up now to the white rope, the middle strand as they call it. Ooh, big boot right to the right, a big ball right to the base, and a diving tackle. No style, no finesse, just pure raw energy. And now looking at, nope. Belly to belly countered with back elbow and back forearm. As Willow goes, ooh, interesting inverted neck breaker there. Who says Willow can't be creative? Back breaker. And now the manipulator getting involved. And that's a big mistake. As now, oof. Willow in the clutches of the hardcore furry. Coming up on the halfway point of the time limit now. Collar and elbow. Don't know what Wild Thing was going for there, but Willow able to barely escape. Irish whip into the corner. What is this going to... Oh, this is going to be the big one. Here we go. You're going to try to end the match with the pound! Period. Five minutes on left. Five for me. Oh, wait a minute. The ref... Bit of a distraction here. Maybe one, two... And just that split second between the impact of the pounce and diving into that cover. These two could fight forever. These two are very well matched. They say styles make matches, and that can mean a difference in styles, and that can make, mean a similarity as well. And these two girls, very similar stats, very similar techniques, very power-based. Lots of slams and throws from both of them. Makes for a heck of a match so far. Four and a half minutes. Collar and elbow, Irish whip. Into the quarter, and a oof, nasty looking right hand. And what do we have here? Oh, boom! Full head of steam on that one. One, two. And just barely able to roll that shoulder before the final and fatal three count could be registered by senior official Joey Bobby Ganoush of the famous Bobby Ganoush wrestling family. Knee drop right across the snout. Willow Nightingale in trouble. Drop down. Ooh! Judas effect! The werewolf taken out. Taking out, I should say. The babe with the power. And oof! Yeah, this is not good. Willow Nightingale in big trouble. She's literally on the ropes now. And Wild Thing not going to let her get to her feet without... Oh, wait a minute! Block with the knee! I don't know if that was playing possum or not, but it worked. Spicoli Driver! Thank you, Ian Riccoboni. One, two... And again, kick out. And notice these are not early kickouts anymore for either of them. Three minutes. Three minutes remaining. And wait a minute. Looking for it. Looking for the babe with the powerbomb! Isatsu was up! Babe with the powerbomb too. No! One more time, the fans are saying, and I agree, that's probably a good plan. One more attempt with the babe with the powerbomb could do this. 
And she's got her, the gut wrench up. Babe with the powerball. Rolling wild thing into the into the middle of the ring. No chance at a break. Two. And victory for Willow Nightingale. Now, who's she going to learn to make the powerball? That would make a very interesting best of seven series, don't you think? Boom. Incredible impact. The babe with the powerbomb bringing Willow Nightingale yet another victory. Here's your winner, Willow Nightingale. Congratulations to the Maid of Power. This brings her up to 12 and 11 in the reign of the old career. She's officially back on the positive side of the roster. Things are looking up for Willow Nightingale in the AWF. We have two back to back singles matches. We've got tag team champions and contenders. Let's put them together and make them fight. Sometimes it really is that easy. Oh, it really is. In our following contest, is here for one fall, introducing first, making her win the ring from the laboratory. Led to the ring by Project Kaiju, and accompanied by her creator, Dr. Jigoku, one half of the Animated Wrestling League. Performance Tag Team Champion Project Titan. All said, Dr. Shiokin has been the master of Tag Team World and Joshi Tag Team and including survival in the Champions Week contest, challenges of the and there's no talking about the Tiger Brother. So that tag team supremacy has been made to I don't know why, I don't know how, I don't know. But we are going to find some of the beat this This first match could be Project Tiger versus Spring Tiger. Tiger enters this match 9 and 3 in her AWL career. Flanked by Dr. Jigoku, of course. Project Kaiju will compete in our next bout. These are 8 and 2, 8 and 2. Plus, also plus 6. Spring Tiger gonna have a heck of a challenge against this metal monstrosity. But then again, this is a chance to scout your opponent before the tag team title match this will be the next conflict between the two. And her opponent being accompanied by Gold Ragoness. Fighting out the unified school of the Tiger style. The Ring Tiger! Back to basics of Spring Tiger 26 and 27. She's back from her trip over to Japan as part of the manager rule, getting to once again manage Tiger Mask Gabudu in an unfortunately losing effort against the Gumba Shadows. Well, earlier this week, she's a bit jet lagged, but she says she's ready to fight. She's 26 and 27, as I said, ratio of minus one. So it's minus one faces plus six, if you believe in statistics when it comes to sporting endeavors like professional wrestling. Ten minutes on the clock. Bang the gong. We are on. Oh! Bit of a stick and move there and going immediately for a tombstone. No, reversed. The darkness driver reversed. Boom! Shades of Tiger the Dark with the darkness of Doraiba. And a hammer fisting forearm right to the stern and right to the top of the chest there. That sucks. Your rib cage is there to protect your vital organs. Chokes. I'm sorry, a claw-based choke slam. Project Titan dominant at the moment right now. Spring Tiger's gonna have to use her quickness, use her strikes, use her skill, use her classical pro progressive training in order to survive. Good dodge roll there. Unfortunately, walks right into that flurry of offense from Project Titan. And I do believe that, yes, next week, 
next week, the Tag Team Titans, the Joshi Tag Team Championships will be on the line. The, uh, the female Augments, Project Titan, Project Kaiju, set to make their fourth title defense of the AWL Joshi, Joshi Tag Team Championships. We will have the first match in the best of seven series. Oh, round and round and round we go. And where we stopped, only Spring Tiger maybe has a clue, and that didn't sound as good out loud as it did in my head. The Augments are the 12th AWL Joshi Tag Team Champions. For the record, uh, Spring Tiger, a former Tag Team Champion with Usachan, Dragonus, a former Tag Team Champion with Akira Merone, though they have never held Tag Team Gold together. In fact, I, I believe no one has ever held Joshi Tag Team Gold in the AWL with two different partners. We've had uh, two-time tag teams, but we've never had single, you know, one wrestler with two different partners holding the belts. Oh, great springboard dropkick and moves like that means it could happen for both Spring Tiger and Dragonus in seven days' time. Up, down, power slam. Power slam, spine buster, whatever you... Yeah, power slam, if, if you don't know exactly what a slam move is called, call it a, a power slam or a body slam. It's, it's, it's a crutch. It's a crutch, I admit it. Drop kick right to the head, right to the helmet. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure if there's even a head under there anymore. We never... Oh, wait a minute. Tiger suplex hold! Referee laid on the count here. One, two... That should have been at least two and a half, possibly a three on the Tiger suplex hold. Referee needs to... Uh-oh. We've seen this. Oh, the, the 450 elbow does not connect. That's one of Spring Tiger's... Uh, more recent innovations, of course, her signature submission move is the STG, the Spring Tiger Giri, the inverted go to sleep. So instead of GTS, it's STG. A move that's been picked up by several male wrestlers and stolen without credit. Wait a minute, Titanobomb into a cover, lack of, somewhat lackadaisical. Normally, after the Titanobomb, Project Titan likes to stack her opponents up. And again, these two could fight forever, but Spring Tiger fighting from underneath right now with six minutes and 15 seconds on the clock. Collar and elbow tie-up. Snapmare off of the ropes. Boom! Penalty kick right to the right to the chest. Right to the breastplate. Right to the chassis, if you will. And again, this time with the other leg, I think that was. Nice German suplex. With an excellent leg sweep to follow up. And that's how you wrestle somebody bigger than you. Get them off their feet and keep them there. Double Polish sledge. The sound of these strikes echoing throughout the AWL battle zone here in the Greater Toronto area. GTA as the locals call it. I don't know if they play the video game or not. I haven't asked. Drop down. Big boot or medium boot considering the height differential involved in this matchup. Dragon is watching off from the outside as is Project Kaiju. Dr. Jigoku ever present as well. Five minutes have elapsed. Five remain. And now I think she is trying to rip off... I can't tell if she's trying to twist the neck or go for the mask there. Of course, that's the most disrespectful thing you can do to any masked wrestler. A wrestler's mask is a reflection of their very soul and you would deny it to them? I don't think so. Backbreaker combination. <laughs> Double backbreaker by Project Titan showing more than human strength. Titanic, titanium-based strength, if you will. One, two, kick out. As Project Titan starting to show frustration, a shockingly human emotion from the Augment, from the robot or cyborg or whatever the hell she is. We never really got a, a clear answer on Project Titan or Project Kaiju, what actually they are. Good boy. This is not good, but 
This is really not good. Tiger gonna be looking for some kind of an escape here. She, I think she can get it going. She's aiming her elbow right to the joint, right between the head and the neck. And right to the seam of the armor, if there is one there. It even is armor, I don't even know. Friend Tiger is still gonna try the strikes, but a body slam of Rome does not. Oh, eats a GDT. As punishment, you cannot. I, don't, I do not think Spring Tiger can outpower Project Titan. Maybe outlever her, but not outpower her. And once again, and this time, yeah, I think, yeah, I think the fingers are under the under the brim of the mask. That would be the ultimate humiliation for a masked wrestler. We've seen wrestlers of the Tiger style lose masks in the past. I'm reminded of Black Tiger 3, who, uh, who suffered Three, the Tiger's execution from Global Wrestling Monopoly after. What, what do we have here? Oh! Neck break pile driver! Shades of the dark side into the arm drag, and that's a great transition to the Fujiwara armbar. That's what I mean about classical wrestling training. Japanese arm drag into the Fujiwara with about a quarter of the time limit remaining. What is this? Up! Tight! That's the... That's the Titanobomb! The Titano... How did she do that? Spring Tiger showing uncharacteristic strength here with the Titanobomb. But couldn't capitalize quite quickly enough. She managed to dive into that cover. This is indeed women's wrestling, what it's all about. Looking for the, oh no, drop, toe hold counter. Spring Tiger goes face first into the canvas. And we are running low on time here. We do have two back-to-back -back matches scheduled. As soon as this match it ends, whether it be for a victory or a, uh, or, a, or a time limit draw, we will immediately jump straight into Project Kaiju versus Dragoness. The other half of half of our tag team title preview. And a lucky miss there for Spring Tiger, but take a look at this. Up, drop. Gotta be a nine, ten foot drop there. Going up. Uh, Project Titan looking to do something really stupid and dangerous. Ooh! Elbow drop from the top, right to the top of the head of Spring Tiger. The mask will provide no protection for that level of impact. One minute. One minute left. Oof. And Dr. I can see Dr. Jigoku yelling at Project Titan, telling her to get back in the ring, get Spring Tiger back in the ring. Either take the count out or bring her in and grab the win. Dragoness looking on, realizing, oh crap, we're going to have to fight these things for the tag team titles? And that is not good. That is not a valid possibility at this point. 30 seconds left. This is probably going to go to a time limit draw. Unless someone can pull something out very, very quickly. What do we have here going up? One last time, the Titanobomb into the deep cover. That's what she should have done the first time. As it gets the win. But we're going to take another look at that as we get the bodies out of the ring. Dragonist and Project Kaiju stepping up now, and there you see it. That deep stack, no chance of getting your shoulder up with that much weight on your shoulders. Two of two, folks. Here we go. Bada bing, bada bang, bada boom. We are off. Ten minutes on the clock again. Project Titan reveling in victory. As once again the, the Kaiju or the, the Augment strong out of the gate, but Dragonus up opportunity. Can she recover here? Oh wait a minute! Dragonus tried a Samoa Joe style walk away, but walked right into it. Misread the girth. Misread the hitbox, if you will, of uh, Project. Kaiju and he's regretting it now. Project Ka oh, wait a minute, what is this? Um, I don't know what that was or what that was supposed to be, but I don't think it worked. No. 
Only about 50 seconds into the match, and Dragonus has been trampled so far. Able to get back to a vertical baseman, unable to land an offensive move. Can't even take the giant off of her feet. At least not willingly. Cover one, two. And that was a deep, deep, deep two count for you know, less than 100 seconds into the contest. Pull an elbow, Irish whip back, reverse, slap down. Man, Dragon is just looking for any kind of a hold, any kind of a perch, any kind of opportunity she can find here in Project Hydrogen. Oh, wait, German! German, that could be it. That could be the start of a comeback. That could be the start of something. Kick to the midsection. Going for the Dragonist sleeper. But a rope break called. I hate to say it, but good call by the referee. The Dragonist sleeper. Doing at least some damage to disorient the opponent. DDT, Dragonist coming back here. Dragonus, a veteran's veteran of the AWL Joshi division, been here since the very start, second generation star. Man, oh man, man alive as they say go. Oh, big drop kick, can't get all the way to the top, but got far enough. Dragonus, 53 wins, 33 losses. Ratio of plus 20 in her AWL career, DDT. One half of the first ever AWL Joshi Tag Team Champion. She knows her way around the ring in a tag team situation. Former AWL Joshi Champion as well. Oh, here we go. Dr. Jigoku getting involved. He has to be careful not to get physically involved, but he doesn't have to. Project Kaiser right there. And wait a minute, Dragon Drop number three. Dragon Drop number three, a move bequeathed to Dragonus by her father. Will number three get the three? No, it does not. Dragon drop number three, not enough. She's got dragon drop one and two. She's got dragonist drops one and two. Going up, ooh, power slam, <laughs> or power bomb. Sit out style, dragonist woozy. Uh-oh, heart punch. Doesn't matter how much padding you've got over that, it's a very dangerous maneuver. Kaiju crash out of the corner. Into the cover. One, two, no. And Kaiju definitely frustrated here. The fans are loving it. It's women's wrestling. You can do a women's wrestling based event without making a big freaking deal out of it. Just have great wrestlers wrestling great matches with, with high stakes. And you can do any of this. And of course, high stakes doesn't get higher than our next match. Neck break. Doesn't get higher stakes than our next match. The Joshi Championship on the line. Lupe Peligro versus Amy Wade, the undefeated up and down. Amy Wade looking for her 22nd consecutive victory without a loss. Boom! Backsplash, go for it again. Ooh, maybe getting a bit cheesy there. Maybe scrapping the move a bit. Dragonus unable to take advantage. Project Kaiju, look at the suplex. Simple and effective, plastic if you will. Going up. Project Kaiju's been obsessed with going to the top rope all match. Oh, in the back then time. That's from a mostly metal super heavyweight. Steel, carbon fiber, titanium, I'm not entirely sure what all she's made out of. The Project Kaiju. One of the most dangerous wrestlers in the world. One more time, for me. And she's calling for it one more time, the Kaiju crash, if she connects with this, and she does. Hits it flush, and Dragonist might be unconscious. The referee checking with a one, two, three. A clean sweep for the Augments in singles competition. But what will happen when they face off next week in the Tag Team Championship? Here is your winner, Project Kaiju. 
And there you see it, Dr. Goku and Project Titan celebrating with Project Kaiju a victory tonight. But tomorrow, but next week, I should say, the Tag Team Gold will be up for grabs. Main event time, fifth title defense. Amy Wade puts it all on the line against one of her biggest rivals. The following contest is your main event of the evening. It is scheduled for one fall, one submission or a knockout, and it is for the Eminem Wrestling League Joshi Championship. A little bit of an error in our graphics department. I am told that yet both members of the Ladies of Lucha will be joining UK Penny Girl for this one on one match. Uh, Luka Tanika only recently hooking up in trios competition with the ladies of Lucha. And when I say biggest rival for Amy Wade, Luka Tanika can end the match anytime at any point with those knockout kicks of hers, springboard drop kick, the running knee. He can knock you out instantly, and that's a big threat to Amy Wade. This match could end at any second, so do not go to the popcorn stand. Make sure you're in your seat because you're going to love this professional wrestling contest. As the dulcet rock version tones of the Canadian National Anthem play throughout the arena, no nonsense, Amy Wade, with her belt, undefeated, former Canadian National Champion, cashed in that Canadian belt in order to challenge for and win the Joshi Championship in a ladder match at the end of last season. A ladder match, of course, originating in Stampede Wrestling, so it's a very Canadian format. And Amy Wade will need to defend once again and get closer to the longest ever undefeated streak in AWO history, 25. This would be her 22nd win if she survives Lupe Peligro. We now go to ringside for the official introduction. Introducing first the challenger, heading out of Veracruz, Mexico, the knockout queen, Lupe Peligro. And her opponent, she is the ring defending and taking wrestling league, Joshi Champion. Heading out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Tonight, making her fifth title defense, the undefeated true Toronto star, Amy Wade. This is an officially sanctioned Yoshi Championship match under the auspices of the Animated Wrestling League, AWO Commissioner presiding. At the sound of the bell, AWO Senior Official Joey Papagannouche in charge. I love how Amy Wade just looks at the belt every time she's called out as champion, like almost like she can't believe it. But this three-star athlete from the University of Toronto, great attitude, very coachable, humble as an undefeated champion can be. Urdaken starting us off springboard, superwoman punch. Amy Wade does not wrestle by the hour. She does not get paid by the hour. She's here to pick up victories as fast as she can because she knows that this match could end at any time. Lupe Peligro has everything it takes to knock her out. Lupe Peligro comes into this match with 20 wins and 11 losses for a ratio of plus nine. And that means she's a lot more experienced. Not only here in the AWL, but in her native Mexico, she had a uh, fairly long career as a luchadora. So we will see if youth and vitality overcome age and wisdom in this match. Now, these two have wrestled before, of course, Amy Wade coming out the victor, but I believe this is the first, this is the first time for the AWL Joshi Championship that they have faced each other. I believe they fought for the Canadian national title. Amy Wade coming to the outside. Now, Amy Wade, unlike most wrestlers, Actually, both these wrestlers, and they do like to knock their opponents out. The outside, not a safe zone for that, because you can get a KO victory, you get a referee stoppage on the outside, you just can't get a pinfall or a submission. And wait a minute, Fermento de Fuego nearly getting involved here. 
A disqualification is a valid title defense in the AWL. The title does not change hands. So if either of the ladies of Lucha do anything beyond cheer on Lupe Peligra, they could cost our friend the match. Elbow drop from the top. Good to know that Amy Wade has been studying her AWL history. And I'm not going to make that history history joke because that's not what the word means. One, and the shoulder is up as soon as the referee's hand hits the map the first time. Ministerial suplex. Of course, the of course, Hiroshi Hase, the former Japanese Minister of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology, developed that ministerial or Northern Lights, if you prefer, suplex. Wrestling in Stampede Wrestling right here in Canada. So that's as much of a Canadian move as it is a Japanese move. And I think that's the perfect move to symbolize everything in the AWL stands for. International professional wrestling. There is no such thing as AWL style. But there might be a very AWL ending to the undefeated streak of Amy Wade right here, right now. Lupe Pavigo, she's going to be looking for the springboard drop kick. This is her one of her best KO maneuvers. Springboard drop kick, and she nails it flush. The referee's going to go for the cover, going to allow for the cover. One, two. Oof. We're not worthy chant from the crowd, and I don't think we are. These two perfectly matched. Great matchmaking tonight by the AWO commissioner, I must say. And I'm not just saying that because he signs my paycheck. He, teams and individuals perfectly matched up. We saw Wild Thing and Willow Nightingale. We're going to see Wild Thing and Usa Chan for the first of seven times next week. We're going to see the tag team titles defended next week and we're going to see a whole lot more action as well we might even listen to the boys play who knows iron elbow tie up ooh knee to the stomach Amy Wade going to be looking for that superwoman punch might be looking for the knockout knee her kickboxing background coming into play she might be looking for the sharpshooter too as a Canadian, she is genetically predisposed to understanding the mechanics of the sharpshooter, or the sasori gatame, if you prefer. And, oh, or she could just take her head off the clothesline. Either works. Cover. One, two. Hell of a main event. The title is on the line tonight as Amy Wade defends her championship and her streak against Lupe Peligro. Oh, knee to the face right under the chin that's a very dangerous place to hit somebody and now washing wiping her boot on the mask of the luchadora that can be seen as unbelievably disrespectful kick away by the challenger as we reach the first time call of the match this has all been five minutes five minutes of the match Oof. 25 remain Lupe Peligro saying, you're out of here. And the clothesline of her own, a second. Leg sweep, and all of a sudden the champion's off her feet. The championship is up for grabs. Lupe Peligro, going, she's going to go for that springboard again. This could, be, this could be the knockout. This could be the knockout. This could be the end of the streak. It is. Oh! The ladies of Lucha celebrating. This could be it. Is Lupe Peligro about to make history in the end? No, she isn't. That was incredibly, incredibly close. I've seen people get knocked out after one of those springboard drop kicks, let alone two. Low, low vertical suplex. No time to build up air resistance. That's going to be maximum impact. Collar and elbow tie up. Irish whip. Into the corner. Lupe Peligro. Oh. Amy Wade with a lucky escape, but a knee strike of her own. Oh, oh this is new. She doesn't usually. Uh oh. Amy Wade going up and boom! Double knees to the face, and that, the referee says, is a knockout. The knockout queen has been dethroned. Getting knocked out by Amy Wade, who just barely survives with her title and her streak intact. He is 22 and oh, let's take a look at this one more time. 
Notice how there's at least defense. There's kicking there, but no, not after that. Here's your winner, and still at the wrestling league, Joshi champion, Amy Lee. Can anyone beat the true Toronto star? At this point, I'm starting to doubt it. The best women's wrestler in the world. Thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Put it in. Money back.